Okay, so the, I shall concentrate on one of our uh, strongest zone. It is the zone of the copper mine basin in Lgom. It is southwest of Poland. I just a moment. I just page down, yeah. Page. Okay. So typ typically, uh, if you have shallow, uh, ex uh, shallow deep mining, uh, the static deformations are taken into account. We have many books about it for a long time, and the, the deeper you dig, the stronger rock bursts you can produce. So nowadays, you can reach even three kilometers in South Africa, 1,200 meters in Poland nowadays to 1,300. So uh, if we come now to this dynamic effect, we have rock bursts, we have nuclear underground explosions, we have conventional explosions, we have explosions of munition storages, pile hammering, traffic, and ground motion. If we compare them, the key issue is not only duration, but uh, first of all, it's the frequency content. And this frequency content could be particularly biased uh, uh, for the rock bursts. So the, the accelerations could be alarming, whereas the velocity are, are, are low. So that's the, the basic point. Don't observe accelerations, observe velocities. Uh, here is some information how it happens. There is a very good uh, contribution from MIT, from Johnston Rockburst from Global Perspective in, from 1992. Uh, the magnitudes may exceed five. You will see in a, in a moment energy could be 10 to power 10 joule. The question is how intensive can be rock burst on the ground surface? So a comparison is very pertinent to, to, to the nuclear underground explosions. In fact, then there is a problem of di differentiating them for North Korea or for so South Africa before from uh, nuclear, nuclear and, uh, and the mining. There are special methods uh, to, to differentiate them uh, when they want to um, monitor these uh, nuclear underground uh, explosions. Here is a rock burst of February 20, 2002. Richter magnitude about 4, MSK 64.6+. So some buildings, some higher buildings uh, have shown cracks. There is a particular problem of the falling furniture due to these high uh, frequency effects. So this could be danger, danger for the people. Here is another one of uh, uh, 4.3 magnitude. Uh, you can see the, the typical problem is uh, f from this type of walls, which are uh, somewhere around here. Then, uh, then you can see in Kalgoorlie, West Australia, magnitude 5. And here is the steel fountain in South, in South Africa. These are typical like normal earthquake uh, effects. This mine was closed afterwards due to these effects. Nobody died on the surface, but it was a problem. But this is very alarming. This picture was taken in 1976 in South Africa. Fortunately, nobody died because 20 minutes before this building collapsed, people showed some uh, signs of not, not proper behavior. The conclusion was that this building was not properly designed to normal natural earthquakes. But obviously, you know uh, that uh, these are miners uh, around this place, the persons who were saying uh, they were the owners of the mines. So this is, this is the way it, it was going in South Africa. Uh, so we did some, uh, some research on these uh, rock bursts and what we found uh, for the uh, copper mine rock bursts. There are two types of them. First type are similar to blast effects. They are frequent return periods, one to three months, short duration, as it was said before, one to two seconds. The accelerations could be 300 centimeters per square second. So when they open a book of seismic engineering, they are really terribly alarmed, but the, the velocities could be two centimeters per second. So this is uncomparable. The second type is similar to shallow earthquakes, and there is a good hypothesis that these are simply triggered earthquake on the nearby faults. Longer duration, four to five seconds. It's like truly earthquake, which was uh, rather short, yes? 
So this could be the beginning, let's say, the, the, the smallest duration of a natural earthquake. But the velocity could be 10 to 20 centimeters. They say, Professor Trifuniak said, 20 centimeters per second is the moment that, you, that the damage could be heavy, could be, let's say, dangerous. Uh, five centimeters per second is that the, the damages start. So these are rough, uh, rough observations. If we look at the, at the accelerograms, as you see, uh, here is the type one, here is the type two, and here you have the Fourier spectra. So rock bursts of type one is simply without energy in the zone from zero to five hertz. If there is no energy from zero to five hertz, it is impossible to shake the normal structure, yes? You can shake the furniture, but this, it is very difficult to induce, particularly for four or five seconds duration, maybe for 40 seconds. So as you see, the velocity for this type is small, for this type is more substantial. Here is another one, a detailed picture of a strong type 2 rock bursts uh, from Polkowice. As you could see again, there is a rather strong vertical uh, component, and this is just like earthquake in a miniature, yes? Because you are close to hypocenter, so the, the vertical effects are stronger, but also the frequencies are shifted. Underground, the frequency could be 30 G, and this pressure kills miners underground. So, as you know, the, the, the frequency is lost. The, let's say the, the frequency components are much faster lost with the, with the passing uh, distance. So now I'm, I'm coming to the main subject, how to mitigate the rock effects for buildings and infrastructure. So Polish geological law says the mining contractor is responsible for all the damages in all the surface infrastructure. There are two methods, direct repairs or compensation af uh, afterwards, and prevention when designing new structures. So the, there is such a problem. Is there a valid seismic design code in the area of mining? If so, then will it lead to design enough strong and sound buildings to be safe and to withstand the mine tremors with minimum damage? So, these are the sub-problems that I obtained. How to obtain the design acceleration when the return period of extreme rock bursts is three to four years, while for earthquakes it is 475 years as for Eurocode 8. So these are totally different approaches, yes? Here in one place you expect something that may happen one in 500 years. Here you can expect something. I compare this risk to a risk of a car bumping on the bridge. That's more or less similar. So we can follow this track of the, of the safety. To what extent inelastic response can be allowed for structural response? Can we accept linear seismic response? At this stage I say no. If you allow only linear, it means that the forces will be overwhelming. That's obvious. You can obtain for uh, one meter per square second acceleration, amazing 25% uh, uh, of G of the, of the static equivalent force. How to obtain design response spectrum, including the local site amplification? So this requires also another approach. So we, uh, we, uh, um, we adapted Eurocode 8. <laughs> Uh, as you see, the, 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 the famous base shear uh, formula uh, can be recalled here. The solution is classic processing of strong motion data of the type 2 rock bursts. We, we forget about the type 1. Type 1 are very low, not to be included in the design. And we have to link the forecasted horizontal ground velocity using maximum relative structural displacements. So interstory drift rules and velocity. So the, the, the most important factor is to organize the velocity zones, velocity which is sometimes fashioned in the seismic code, but not, not very often, because engineers prefer acceleration. 
but acceleration is totally misleading in this induced seismicity case. So we managed to have 18 records of uh, strong records on the, the site type B, all of them on the site type B. We use the Monte Carlo technique. I uh, had some help from Carlo Lai from Pavia to uh, work on this uh, on these uh, records to using the Shake software, and th then we constructed elastic response spectra. So uh, uh, just a moment. So here are these uh, this spectra for type A and B and type C. So as a central for us was type B uh, uh, response spectrum. These are the spectra. And the key problem, how to link the forecasted horizontal ground velocity using uh, with the design acceleration. So what we uh, use, we decided that we have to obtain the maximum displacement here. So the level of maximum displacement obtained from the uh, design, uh, design response spectrum and from the rock burst would lead to the equivalent velocity. So we simply, what we decided to fit, you, here we have the displacement response spectrum of Eurocode 8 and here are two response spectra, displacement response spectra of the, uh, of the, uh, of the rock bursts. So using this fitting procedure, we obtained such a ratio, 8.63 between velocity and design acceleration. And then we have equivalent design acceleration. The, the, we've uh, repeated this fitting uh, uh, 18 times, so we obtained average value of 8.29, but we decided to keep it, let's say, as typically easy to be uh, analyzed uh, uh, 10 uh, 10 uh, multiplier equal to 10. So, so there is a multiplier between velocity and design acceleration equal to 10. Then we obtained the zones. We have here four zones uh, of, of the design. As you see, they are rather small for the design. But we have to, uh, to remember we cannot use Q factors of 4, 5, 6. The Q factor to be applied here could be 1.5 or 2. So we arrived at the uh, inelastic simplified uh, structural effects in form of response spectra. And then obviously there are exceptions. Freestanding chimneys, for example, inverted pendulum structures. Here we have to use the, uh, the, linear, uh, the linear approach. We have to remember about the uh, inside walls of the hypermarkets, of supermarkets, because they are inside. There is no pressure of wind on them, but they could fall due to this uh, induced uh, seismicity problems. So the final algorithm for the design is like this. Oh, I'm sorry for the, for the Polish language here. So there is a velocity here, then the design acceleration, then the uh, design response spectrum, then the calculation using some software like SAP 2000. And then there is an example, a, a hypermarket uh, steel building we calculated for the soil type zone C. So you see the design acceleration is not very uh, much, uh, not very substantial, 60 centimeter per square second, soil, soil type C. And what we obtained for, uh, uh, for bending moment for uh, inelastic uh, effects is 25% of the one which comes from the dead load here, which is uh, the most substantial. If we use the, uh, the, the, the elastic approach, we obtain uh, 40%. So in this case, it's, uh, it's a stronger value, but it is comparable to the dead load. So it's not very substantial, but you see here is the, uh, the assumption of six centimeter per second velocity, but we already recorded 12. But this is not on my side. This is on the side of the mining contractor who has uh, seismological services to do the forecasts. So there should be a forecast of velocity. So conclusions. Rock bursts can be classified as similar to blast type one or similar to shallow earthquake type two. The strong type 2 rock bursts can reach local magnitude of the level of about 4 to 5 or even more. The epicentral intensities are similar to nuclear underground explosion with uh, intensity 6 to 8. And the source is similar to shallow natural earthquake. 
So here, a rational method was proposed to define design seismic acceleration. In the adaptation of the civil engineering design code, the key issue was the different seismic risk definition, five years return period versus 500 years. And here, the Eurocodate methodology was adapted, and here is the publication. I have some uh, reprints. If anyone is interested, I can distribute or can email the PDF. It is also available normally at the LSVR site. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>